Welcome. Welcome to this webinar today. Had to wave, wave our flag here in honor of Great Britain here. So I just want to say welcome to this webinar hosted by Travify Academy with our amazing guests, Gina Bang from Avanti Destinations and Lisa Sholand from Visit Britain, who I'll introduce here shortly and we will dive in. Um, but first, I do want to quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Stephanie Grice and I'm the Senior Client Champion and Education Coordinator here at Travify. And I can't wait to introduce our amazing guests here in a minute. Um, but the one thing I do want to do is I want to give a quick plug on what Travify Academy is and just kind of what to expect on this webinar. Um, so what's really great is Travify partners with experts across the travel industry to provide free educational webinars with experts across the travel industry uh, to provide these free educational webinars through what we call Travify Academy. So these webinars are not commercial in nature to promote um, those organizations, nor does Travify ever accept compensation for these partnerships either. So Travify Academy really is just existing to provide powerful educational experiences and really fulfill Travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals. So even though you know this isn't about Travify software, this is about how to gain knowledge in the travel industry and how to you know, increase your bookings and make your business better. Um, so really our hope for Travify Academy is to be a resource for travel advisors from a wide range of perspectives um, and different experience levels as well that you'll find in today's webinar. Um, so once we get going with this webinar, um, I do want to pl uh, quickly plug as well that this is the first webinar for our webinar series of Selling Europe. So every day this week, we're going to have a different country that we focus on that we are going to talk with a panel of experts. Um, so we're really, really excited for this, our first one, our first kickoff. So everybody welcome and thanks for joining us. Um, but I do also want to mention that we will have time at the end for Q&A. So there is a uh, questions box um, that's in your panel for GoToWebinar, and you can ask questions there. Um, so I'm going to be watching those as the presentation goes on, and um, I'll be asking those at the end so that our experts can answer those questions. Um, another thing that's really important to note is that this webinar is being recorded. So um, after this, if you have to hop off or you have a colleague who wanted to join, no worries. After this, there will be a recording link sent out. And then you can also find all of the replays from today's webinar and then the following uh, webinars this week at academy.travify.com. So the moment, with all that being said, now I want to introduce our special guests and then they're gonna get going on their presentation. Um, but the first guest that I want to um, tell you about is Gina Bang from Avanti Destinations. So Gina Bang has an insatiable curiosity about the world, other peoples and cultures, and particularly uh, their cuisines. So she has made foodie pilgrimages, pilgrim cannot speak today, it's Monday, uh, foodie pilgrimage to countries throughout Europe, Asia, and the Americas. Um, so she's been with Avanti Destinations for more than 15 years, selling through travel agents. Avanti sells an enormous number of range of um, extraordinary experiences, activities, hotels, tours, and transfers for independent travelers going to Asia, Europe, Central, and South America. All of these pieces are then stitched together to create a completely custom crafted vacation that suits the passions, budget, and timetable for each traveler. So today, Gina serves as the director of marketing. She's also responsible for maintaining and developing relationships with travel agent consortia, as well as uh, tourist boards and other partners on joint marketing efforts. So she began her career at Avanti as a customer service representative, then a manager of inside sales, while at the same time functioning as the product manager for Central and Northern Europe. So the most satisfying part of her work is besides the traveling and tasting new and different foods, of course, um, building long-term relationships and friendships with all of the different people that she works with, both here in the US and abroad as well. So we're so excited. Thank you, Gina, for being here. And then to introduce our second guest is Lisa Sojourn, uh, Sholand, uh, I was always practicing that, um, from Visit Britain. So Lisa Sholand heads up Visit Britain's Los Angeles office as senior B2B marketing manager, USA. 
So she develops and manages strategic relationships with travel companies in the US and the UK, focusing on integrated marketing partnerships and B2B marketing content and communications. So Lisa is passionate about tourism marketing expert with over 25 years in the travel industry. So prior to joining Visit Britain in 2003, Lisa held sales and marketing roles with the Hong Kong Tourism Board, Park Lane Hotels International, and Radisson Hotels International. So with all that being said, welcome Gina and Lisa. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my webcam here so I don't distract you with my, my flag here that I'm so excited about. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to pass it on over to you, Lisa and Gina. Great. Thanks so much. It's uh, really exciting to be here with you and uh, wonderful to uh, connect with all of your Travify listeners. Uh, we want to give you uh, an update today on Great Britain. And uh, we're partnering with our uh, Avanti Destinations, uh, which we've worked together with for years. But we've especially done a, a really unique promotion over the last couple of years focusing on the local flavors of Great Britain. But first, I just want to give you a little bit of a uh, Great Britain 101, uh, give you a little bit of the uh, latest activities in Britain. Uh, and first, we're going to start by uh, just highlighting some of the key points uh, about Great Britain. Uh, we've got 65 million people. We've got 905 weekly flights a year going into the UK. Uh, you're never more than 70 miles from the coastline. And the rail system is amazing. Only two to four hours from Britain's capital cities right into uh, by train. Uh, Americans love visiting Britain. Uh, the U.S. is Britain's most valuable inbound market. Uh, almost 4 million Americans visited the U.K. in 2018. Uh, so it's, it's still one of the most popular destinations for Americans. We started a campaign called I Travel 4 uh, about a year or two ago. And that is to kind of take advantage of the fact that so many people do have really positive thoughts about, you know, visiting Britain, but they might not feel that, you know, urge sense of urgency. So this new campaign that we came up with is called I Travel For, and it focuses on people's emotional uh, passions for travel. And uh, it can uh, only be had in Britain. So we focus on, you know, local flavor. So people that are interested in food and drink, uh, culture, adventure, thrills. So highlighting some of the iconic places, uh, but with a little bit of a twist. This is going a little slowly. Bear with us. There we go. Okay, so uh, it's about the passions that inspire people to travel. And also, you know, seeing Britain in more of a dynamic way, seeing Britain and its people. Uh, we know that people are inspired to travel by many things. And, you know, you have to think about what do you travel for? What do your clients travel for? Mm, this is not moving as fast as I would like. All right. Let's see if we can keep this going. Uh, when you travel for stories, a lot of people are traveling for, you know, literary history, uh, great authors or poets that they love, which, of course, Great Britain has millions of. Uh, but also they could be traveling for uh, film and TV, uh, you know, being inspired by different shows that they've watched and they want to go visit those locations. And bliss, of course, uh, the great outdoors, uh, different adventure and going into the countryside. And culture, of course, we don't have a shortage of that in Great Britain. England, Scotland and Wales are their own you know, nations with their own histories uh, and culture. And uh, Wales is a really good example of that. The Welsh language is still alive and well. And obviously, culture plays a really important part. Uh, in visiting any destination. And local flavors, which is our uh, culinary um, uh, focus, uh, the different regional specialties and uh, culinary hotspots uh, in England, Scotland, and Wales 
was the focus of the campaign that we've done with Avanti. There we go. And here, here are Lisa and I um, being a little silly, a little sparkly, but, you know, it's all for a great reason. It's to celebrate the local flavors of Great Britain. This, uh, us and our sparkly Union Jack dresses, this was for um, a British Invasion Week at our Avanti office here in Portland, Oregon. And the picture on the left is actually we're in Cardiff at right next to the castle having some uh, tea on um, November 11th last year on Remembrance Day. So it was, it's been a phenomenal, I think it's been almost two years now, partnership with Visit Britain talking about all the goodies, the treats that people love to take home and share with their loved ones when they're home and also enjoy when they're traveling in uh, Great Britain. Just moving on a little bit about, you know, just before we get into more of the destination and product information, uh, I wanted to give you a brief introduction of Avanti if you're not familiar. I'm Gina. Thanks for that great intro, Stephanie. Uh, one of the first uh, things I wanted to mention to everyone is just Avanti is committed to the trade. So we're 100% B2B. We only work with agents, agencies, and the consortia. We um, you know, work really closely with destinations because there's nothing better than a partnership with the experts in the destination, like the tourism boards, and um, an outfit in the United States that's locally owned and operated that can help your clients have that unique customized experience. So we really try to develop tools and products that make you, the advisor, look like an expert in your client's eyes. We really try to find uh, sources that you know people can't find on their own, the ungoogleable, the not being able to book it direct is really important uh, as the end of industry changes and there's more access by more people. But this is a group of us and um, at RHA Swizzly at the Royal Horticultural Garden. Um, there's a few of those. We're going to be talking about them a little bit later, but we took about a group of 30 different travel advisors with us to England last year, which was fantastic. And Avanti is really well known as being a one-stop travel source. So we're really, you know, all-encompassing for customized travel in the destinations we service. For example, our international airfare, not only do we offer the airfare, but we offer really flexible ticketing uh, options for you. So if you're flying on Norwegian or BA or Delta to get over to the UK, you know, we have tour contract airfare and um, you can ticket that in advance with a really low air deposit. So you can walk in that rate, protect your clients from any kind of schedule change by paying a low deposit. So for economy and premium economy, for example, it's $400 per ticket instead of having to pay that full fare up front to ticket it, which is uh, something we introduced last year based on our advisor uh, wish list. We also offer a variety of transfers. So within cities, of course, from the hotel to the airport, rail station, or pier, but also um, between cities in some cases. And we'll go over one of those options in a little bit. Accommodations, we have a variety of three, four, and five-star hotels. We also offer a variety of unique accommodations. So this could be B&Bs and actually manor houses in the UK. Uh, we have, I think, probably our strongest suit is uh, the variety of experiences that we can offer your customers uh, via that tour, tours and sightseeing. So these are, you know, anything from city passes, museum entrances, up to, you know, seat and coach uh, city sightseeing tours, but it could also be really unique individualized experiences that we have quite a few already uh, as suggestions for your customers. But if your clients want to do something completely bespoke, completely customized, like a special request, we can help arrange that as well. So we, in the UK, we see a lot of people going back for maybe uh, genealogy visits that's more specialized, but also just a lot, you know, love affair of gardens, history, architecture, and culture. 
We are specialists of rail, so we sell rail on three continents. In the UK, you can come in from mainland Europe on the Eurostar via Paris, Brussels, or Amsterdam, or you can travel within the country on Brit Rail. We do have a variety of small ship cruises that um, it's more applicable in like the Mediterranean, the Baltics, and South America. So I won't go into that now, but we do have that for you. And then of course, pre and post cruises. Um, we offer, you know, of course, a customized land stay. So that means that your clients can get away from that group either before or after um, the cruise and travel like an individual uh, on land with Avanti. And then, of course, with all the crazy stuff that's happening with weathers and flight delays and um, all that nasty stuff, it is imperative that you do offer your clients um, a travel protection plan. And, you know, if you don't have one that you're already preferred with, we do have a very great coverage uh, that Avanti can offer your customers. And then uh, the other thing that we get great comments about are our staff. They are very well educated because we send them out to travel quite a bit with us. Uh, we have over uh, about 170 employees at Avanti, about 150 in our Portland office, and we are constantly, you know, this year we're sending 120 of them overseas to all of our various destinations to get that on the ground experience to help you sell the destination to your customers. And then of course, we also have our partners on the ground. So we use uh, DMCs wherever we are so that your clients have that 24-7 uh, coverage when they're traveling because it's really important that they have someone in the same time zone that can help them immediately. We realize that and offer that to you wherever we are. And as we get into Great Britain, I did just want to mention that we do have um, a bunch of itinerary suggestions for you today, but just keep in mind that anything can be customized. And I'm gonna hand it back over to Lisa to give us a little bit of an introduction to its wonderful capital. Great, thanks, Gina. Uh, as you know, Britain has a amazing lift into the UK, and it's not just into London, it's all over uh, England, Scotland, and Wales. And one of the benefits of that is being able to experience, you know, the secondary cities, other locations that are not as popular, not as uh, crowded during the summer. Uh, so definitely uh, keep track of all of the new routes and we will share those on our newsletters. So definitely uh, join us on our newsletter. Okay, this is going really slow again. I must not have... There we go. All right, so we're going straight to the London Food Hub. Uh, amazing specialties there. Uh, you know, craft beer distilleries have been popping up all over London as well as in England, Scotland, and Wales. Uh, there's historic places like Borough Market. That's one of my favorite places to just you know explore and eat the best ice cream from uh, the Cotswolds or you know the best. Uh, uh, bakeries and pastries or pasties from the Southwest, cider and all different types of spirits. It's really, really a fun place. You can just eat and drink for hours, which I've done, and then you have to go do a lot of walking to burn that off. Uh, but one of the uh, other amazing things that has been happening in London is the uh, gin scene. Uh, London's uh, relationship with gin goes back more than 300 years. Uh, it's currently undergoing a big revival, and there's new distilleries popping up around London, uh, producing award-winning gins and uh, have great gin distillery tours. So in context of putting together kind of like a London foodie option for your clients, we have a small three-night package. So it's just kind of like a city break where your clients go to the Greenwich Food walking do a Greenwich Food walking tour and also visit the City of London Gin Distillery. These experiences can be customized. Maybe your clients want to do a brewery experience instead of we have those options, of course. But we tried to pair some kind of off, off the beaten path um, sites within London since it is so popular. But as Lisa was talking about the borough market, we do have a fabulous uh, private walking tour there with Celia Brooks 
who is the only licensed guide at the market. So it's just a really fun way to kind of introduce yourself to British cuisine today um, and get a really cool uh, way to intermix with the locals because Celia knows everyone in that market. So you go around with her as her friend and you get to do sips and samples along the way. And, you know, it, I think the philosophical question of the year is, if you didn't Instagram your dinner, did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> and Lisa, do you mind talking a little bit more about the other kinds of uh, thematic travel that people can have in London? Absolutely. Uh, obviously, London, it's one of the most iconic cities in the world, uh, and the London skyline is constantly changing. Uh, if you haven't been uh, in the last few years, uh, this is a shot of the Shard, and it's now Western Europe's tallest building. You can visit and see amazing 365 views of London, and uh, it's actually very close to Borough Market, so it's a really fun way to kind of have a little bit of a little bit of old and new uh, together in one day. Uh, the Shangri-La Hotel is within uh, the building and uh, amazing uh, place, obviously, to stay or to have drinks. Uh, but surrounding London, of course, uh, there's the iconic places like St. Paul's Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, Buckingham Palace, Shakespeare's Globe. Uh, the London Eye is something that I, I do, I think, probably every time I go to London, I never get tired of it. I've been working for Visit Britain for you know over 15 years, and I would say it's always a great choice uh, for clients, uh, whether they're going to be there at daytime or nighttime. Obviously, you want to have a fairly clear day, uh, but uh, even if you don't, it's still super fun. Uh, so you know, the London is also just an amazing walking city, and it's full of culture. So you don't have to feel guilty from eating all of the delicious food. Uh, you can definitely uh, go to walk to the theater. Um, there's tons of uh, shows that are going on, not just in uh, in the theater, but also um, in the parks. And uh, this last year has just been a, a wonderful year uh, of theater um, and functions at uh, the O2. They had Mamma Mia uh, with a party experience. Um, uh, Mary Poppins opened up at the London Col um, at the Prince Edward Theatre, so lots of things to see, uh, as well as in the parks. Um, there's more than 230 theaters in London, and uh, amazing places like uh, the Regent Park, uh, where they have open air theater. Uh, so lots of um, lots of different places to go, depending on what people are interested in, whether it's classical music at the Royal Albert Hall or, uh, you know, more contemporary fun things to do. And, of course, Britain's famous for, uh, you know, Liverpool and the Beatles, but there are just amazing uh, British musicians, um, icons that have uh, popped up all over um, in Manchester and Scotland and all over that you can do all kinds of tours. So, uh, obviously, another very wonderful thing about the history of Britain is our uh, royal heritage. And uh, if you have clients that love royal heritage and want to learn more about the royal family, you know, whether it's past, present, or future, uh, Kensington Palace is obviously one of the top locations to visit. Uh, it, uh, we actually just celebrated the 200, year, uh, 200 years since the birth of Queen Victoria. And uh, Kensington Palace and the historic royal palaces, uh, they always create these really wonderful exhibitions uh, all year round, and uh, you can learn uh, all these different things about the royal family that you didn't know before, and they make it very interactive and uh, super interesting. Uh, but also, if you want to look at, uh, you know, the current things of what's going on with uh, Harry and Meghan or their favorite shops or bars or things like that, you can always check out uh, visitlondon.com. They have uh, a royal section uh, that you can uh, check out the latest things going on with uh, the young royals. And then gardens, uh, that's another really important part of uh, the royal history. Uh, the Royal Horticultural Society, its sole focus is driven by the sheer love of plants and the belief that gardeners make the world a better place. 
and that underpins everything they do. So there's four major gardens in England, um, and obviously the Chelsea Flower Show is a big part of highlighting the different gardens and the amazing history of uh, flowers and all of the things that we love about um, experiencing gardens. There's also uh, the RHS Spring Launch and uh, Orchid Show that's going to kick off uh, this year. And then they have a new um, London Art and Photography Show that kicked off this summer. So we're hoping uh, that's going to take place again next year. And now I'll pass it back on to uh, Gina to tell you some of the new itineraries they've created. Thanks, Lisa. So we do love gardens here at Avanti. I think it's just a great way uh, for you know Americans to see a lot of the heritage of how things were created and just like the different styles. Uh, someone once asked me, you know, what is the style of an English garden? But honestly, it varies. It just depends. There's like the romantic ones and the kitchen gardens and the very traditional kind of structured topiary gardens. So we can take your clients through all those different kinds of experiences. So this is 10 nights through pretty much, you know, the mid to southern areas of England. And we go four nights in London, two nights in the Cotswolds, two nights Lake District, and two nights York. And it's a combination of transportation options. So some of it is by rail and some of it is by uh, private transfer. But what's great about this is that not only are you seeing some of the RHS uh, gardens, the Royal Cultural Society gardens, but you're also seeing some of the pest gardens, like at Kew, for example, where they have amazing, in the winter if you go, they have an amazing orchid show that Lisa was discussing. Uh, but we also kind of combine the gardens with uh, other sites like castles and the kind of royal heritage of the area. So here we have, we're back in the Lake District, um, the Oldswater Lake Cruise, and just in the Lake District is kind of like a giant garden in itself. Uh, it's so lovely, so many great authors have come from this region of England. And this just takes you, you um, have you know, some private guides at some sites, and some of it is on your own. But if you have clients that are looking, you know, maybe they want to do the first part of this package and then the last part maybe end in Scotland, we can totally adjust that to fit their needs. Great. Well, Northern England in general uh, is home to some of Britain's most breathtaking countryside. Uh, it's famous for its rivalries with the difference football, which uh, we call soccer all the different clubs, um, Liverpool, Manchester, and you can get up to uh, Manchester from London on the train in less than two hours. So it's definitely uh, a place that you can spend a week or you can do it for um, you know, a full day uh, side trip if you want, but we definitely recommend uh, spending more time up there. Uh, there are great flights that are going into Manchester, like Virgin Atlantic just uh, launched their LAX to Manchester nonstop. Uh, so it, it takes you up into the, the gateway to Northern England by staying in Manchester. Uh, come on. There we go. Uh, Liverpool, obviously the city that gave us the Beatles. Uh, but there's so much more than that. There's great culture, the premium um, premiership football team. Uh, Liverpool also has seven free museums, uh, including the Tate Liverpool and the World Museum of Liverpool, which are fabulous state-of-the-art uh, museums. They have a beautiful skyline uh, and really great stadium tours. And honestly, even if you are not a big uh, you know, football or soccer fan, Going to a local game is so exciting because it's absolutely packed, uh, not a seat empty, and uh, it's just a real cultural phenomenon there. It's, a, it's so much fun. Uh, one of the other uh, new experiences that just opened up is the uh, Strawberry Field, uh, and that is a new, authentic, and unique addition to the Beatles tourism experience. Uh, it's a unique and exciting new product, uh, and there are uh, commissionable rates for the travel trade, uh, and it's a visitor attraction with a difference. Uh, the significant um, P 
piece. It's open to group tours as of this month, and uh, it's basically the iconic site that was immortalized by John Lennon uh, in the Beatles hit Strawberry Fields Forever, and basically it was the site of the former Salvation Army Children's Home, and that's where John Lennon uh, found solace as a child uh, playing in the ground. So now everyone can go there. Uh, it is not just um, an attraction, it's also uh, built-in um, philanthropy for uh, young children uh, in, the, uh, in the region, and um, it's, it's a really wonderful place, so definitely something to recommend uh, to your clients. And I had to throw this one in, Lisa. It's the yeah. so the every year the Avon T regional sales director, so the sales team, we go to somewhere in the world and we have a meeting and also do site inspections and do some team building. And here we are at the Cavern Club, which is fabulous. You can go pretty much any any time of day and any day of the year. And they just have cool musicians. It's just like that iconic Liverpool. Liverpudlian experience, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Liverpudlian, yes. Yeah. And uh, this may sound scary, but you can also sing on stage. Uh, I did it myself. <laughs> um, and it's it's so much fun. So you, they have, it's like karaoke, so, but they have a live band. Uh, and then you can get up on stage and sing along. And it's so much fun. So anyone can do that. So obviously, uh, it's it's a great music scene. Uh, and uh, now we're going to move on to uh, Manchester, of course, which also has an amazing music scene. Uh, it's uh, home to uh, England's most popular football teams, uh, Manchester United and Manchester City. You can take a stadium tour. Uh, it's really, really fun. But there's also uh, Canal Street, which is one of Britain's most famous gay villages. Uh, the Lowry, uh, which is the world's largest collection of uh, works by L.S. Lowry, uh, one of the uh, best-loved British artists uh, of the 20th century, and then the Northern Quarter, which has uh, got all these really cool uh, vintage shops and record stores and uh, all kinds of fun things. Uh, then we also have uh, the Manchester International Festival, uh, it's uh, one of the world's uh, first festivals of original new work and special events, uh, and it's the biggest event on Manchester's cultural calendar. So the festival took place this July, and it's staged every two years. So the next edition uh, will take place in 2021, and it'll uh, be in its new permanent residence. So north of the England, um, it's the flagship new cultural venue. It's called The Factory. Now, moving on to the Lake District, uh, which is also, like uh, Gina was saying, part of uh, Northern England. Uh, Cumbria is home to the Lake District National Park. So just in 2017, it was uh, designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, so it's the largest in the UK. So it's all protected. It's absolutely spectacular. It's only three and a half hours away uh, by train from London. Uh, and the region combines uh, some of the most beautiful scenery, uh, and it has a rich food culture. So um, the Lake District uh, really has a growing reputation as a food lover's destination, and um, there are uh, great places to go to eat, which uh, Gina will uh, share with you in her uh, new tour that they created. Uh, but there's four Michelin star restaurants in the region, uh, it's home to dozens of breweries uh, specializing in craft beers and traditional ales, and it has its own distillery. It does. The Lakes Distillery. Actually, I still have a, my bottle that I brought home from that May visit. Um, it's a bottle of Lakes Distillery gin, but actually their award winner is their vodka, which I tried there. And it's doesn't taste like anything, which I think is the point. <laughs> it's great. Uh, in Cumbria, so the Lake District, we have really a variety here. So I just picked one of my favorites, which is Culinary Cumbria in a nutshell. Uh, so this is really fun because you kind of stay in two different areas of the Lake District, which is quite large. 
So one um, in one section, you can do Hilltop, which is where Beatrix Potter's house is. And it's her charming cottage, which has no lights in it. And as you explore, like, the you know, all the different rooms and where, like, her garden, when she was inspired, literally all around her house is, like, a beautiful garden, and everything in that area is completely restored and very, very charming, and you get to go have afternoon tea, which is one of those quintessential British experience experiences at a castle. You can go to the Grasmere Gingerbread Shop, and this is, like, kind of, like, a must-do for anyone in the area. Uh, it's very, um, I would say, very tasty, very thin, not overly sweet kind of gingerbread, and the shop itself is just darling. And this is really special. So <laughs> the cute girl with the cute alpaca, this is kind of a self-adventure trek. So you go hiking with an alpaca. So you try to guide it. Most of the time it's guiding you, but you have a nice walk and just a different kind of ambiance with the gardens, the lakes, and the alpacas, and a great guide. And it's just a really fun and engaging experience. And then just moving to York. So this is kind of one of our Avanti's hubs for between London and Edinburgh. Uh, we use it, one, because the rail service is awesome. Um, you can get there. You can even do a day trip from London if you wanted to. Uh, but it's a great place for history. It has a very cute um, old town and a beautiful old minster there. And what a lot of people are doing uh, with combining London and York is that we are seeing a lot of combinations with the foodie elements. So this is one that we recommended, we put together as a recommendation for our culinary campaign. So this is really taking all the different things that you would drink. So tea and beer and gin, and we kind of uh, tied it all up in a nice package for you. But if you have people that maybe don't drink alcohol, you can do more tea or tea and foods or even tea and cooking, which is a really fun thing. Or maybe if someone that's more interested in history, York has an awesome uh, train museum. You can even have tea in a old carriage that the queen used to travel in. Um, so it's just a, a really fun way and really it low stress because the transportation piece is super easy. And let's move to the southwest of England, Lisa. All right. So the southwest, uh, if you're a local, you know that it's renowned for its amazing seafood and cream teas. Uh, we have a famous seafood chef, Rick Stein, and he's got uh, multiple fabulous restaurants. Uh, also in the region nearby is Bristol. Uh, it's just 12 minutes from Bath by train. And Britain's number one city, uh, it's Britain's number one city of beer. It has 15 craft breweries. So uh, also if you've got clients who are fans of the TV shows like Doc Martin or Poldark, you will definitely want to promote this because they can explore all the region has to offer and follow in the footsteps of their favorite shows. This is a Cornish pasty, some from Cornwall, and it's famous uh, for the times when the miners were going down into the mine and working all day, and so they were made so that they could hold the ridge on top and, uh, and not get any of the coal into the food that they were eating. So it was filled with traditional meat and potatoes and vegetables, uh, but there's all these new contemporary ways to eat them, and they're still, you know, a staple uh, in the region and uh, so delicious. And one of the other favorites uh, is the uh, cream teas. Uh, so in the Southwest, Devon and Cornwall uh, are both, you know, very proud of their their scones and and the, the clotted cream, the Devonshire cream. And so uh, they have this feud that's been going on for years of the right way to eat a scone. And so, uh, you know, Devon, they uh, feel that you must put the cream on uh, before your jam. Uh, and then in Cornwall, it's the other way around. So they, they always disagree on this. And so 
you also need to come and test and decide what is better. Do you put the jam on first and then the cream on top? Or do you put the cream and then the jam? And, you know, I've spent many hours trying to decide what is the best way. I still haven't decided, uh, but I highly recommend you or your clients come and experience it them for themselves. I recommend a healthy amount of that clotted cream that you can't <laughs> find back home. <laughs> so good. So that that is a great question, you know, cream or jam. We also have that question in travel, rail or driver. <laughs> so for the south uh, west of England, we do recommend having a private driver just because the rail system, you can do it, but it's not the most efficient, and it is kind of long, so we like to break it up along the way. So, for example, if you stay in three nights in London and then you go out to Cornwall or Devon, one of the things that's great about having a private driver is that on the, um, on the way out there, you can stop by the Bombay Sapphire Distillery and have a tour and do all your tastings and have a gin and tonic right there at that really beautiful center that they have and not have to drive afterwards so that's one of the pluses um, also it is just combining like this area so you'll have the driver with you for three days while you're in either Cornwall or Devon so you can you know hop out to the coast which is like so craggy and beautiful and you see some really you know cute little fishing villages and get a you actually get to meet some really nice people at the pub um, and then on the way back, after maybe you want to go fishing or go out to the Eden Project or go out to the um, to the brewery, St. Austell Brewery, that's right in Cornwall, uh, on the way back, you can uh, hopefully time your trip to end right around sunset and stop by Stonehenge when that's happening. That'd be a fant fantastic way to wrap up the trip. And let's just, we have a little bit on Scotland and Wales. Can you give us a little bit of a description about Scotland, Lisa? Sure. Uh, Scotland is um, such a lovely place. And I have to say that one of the biggest reasons why uh, people love it so much is because of the people. Uh, the Scots are very passionate about their uh, history and heritage. Uh, they are, they'll just, talk your arm off the minute that you, you know, jump in a taxi. Uh, so, you know, there's such a warm welcome. That's one of the things I just love about it. But the other thing, it's just this ancient architecture. I mean, Edinburgh, which is the capital city, it's uh, the whole thing is practically a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, so it's a great walking city. Uh, but then the beauty of being able to go into um, the uh, the highlands and to the uh, all the beautiful islands on the coast. So it's it's just got so much to offer. Um, also such an incredible uh, royal heritage. Uh, so the Queen's official residence in, is in Edinburgh when she's uh, visiting or when she's on vacation. Uh, and uh, from J July to September is when she makes her annual visit to Scotland. Uh, and then of course the Royal Mile, it's incredible shopping. And uh, you just follow the road and you'll end up um, at the castle. Um, one of the Royals' favorite summertime retreats is the Balmoral. Uh, that's in the Highlands. And uh, the grounds and gardens and exhibitions are open to the public from April to July. You should definitely uh, check the times. And then the Royal Yacht Britannia. That's a really, really cool place uh, to visit. Uh, that's where um, the Queen and the royal family, they used this uh, yacht for 40 years, traveling all over. And uh, it's really been left intact. Uh, and it's just a lovely uh, experience to you know, walk around and see where they slept and where they had their meals and all the different people that they hosted. It's really, really interesting. Um, also, right nearby, um, they've just opened up a new luxury floating hotel. It's called the Fingal. F-I-N-G-A-L. Uh, it's a former Northern Lighthouse board ship, and it's a luxury floating hotel. Uh, so it uh, is an exclusive use venue uh, in Edinburgh's fashionable waterfront, uh, a luxury accommodation. So if you have any uh, clients that are really into historic ships, it's a really unique place to stay. 
That sounds awesome. So there's so many ways to explore Edinburgh, but I wanted to just highlight one of the new ways that Avanti is offering our private tours, which is by Mini Cooper. How fun. So this is just really nice because once you get down to these smaller size cars, you can go into more of those narrow streets and go even more interior into Edinburgh, which is just a fabulous, fabulous city. It's so like, I don't think, I went for my first time this year and I didn't even realize how much you can see there. There's so much to do and it's just buzzing. I love that whole grass market area and all the different pubs that are there now. The gastro pub scene is fabulous and everyone's just there and getting, you know, having the best time. So this is just one of the ways we also, of course, have walking tours. We have, um, you know, food walking tour even and just also like of course the standard sightseeing but who wouldn't want to go to Edinburgh and have a delicious Scottish salmon or a wee dram of whiskey and I did just want to mention I know this is your slide Lisa but that the gin uh, takeover I should call it is also occurring in Scotland and some of my favorite gins are out of Scotland and it's interesting just to hear the the people that are there making it what is encouraging them to proceed because even though it is a shorter time to to uh, cure and have ready than for whiskey which has like I think it's a minimum eight or ten years or something um, they are just getting so creative with all the different flavors and aromatics and the inspiration for those gins. So it's just a fabulous way to taste a different part of Scotland. And one of the other things that we're offering from Fort William is the famous Harry Potter train. So the Jacobite steam train that um, you've seen all on in the movies. And this is just a, a day tour, so it's almost a full day, but you do a loop. and fabulous old steam train, really fun way to see the countryside. And do you mind hopping us over to Wales, Lisa? I'd be happy to. Uh, so beautiful Wales. Uh, Cardiff is the Wales, uh, Wales capital. It's only two hours from London by train. Uh, the Welsh people are so friendly and also very proud of their heritage. Uh, the official languages of Wales are English and Welsh and around 20% of the population speak Welsh. So you'll see the signage uh, is in the two languages and uh, it's a Celtic language and it's one of Europe's oldest living languages. Uh, it has beautiful, beautiful territory, uh, 870 miles of coastline, uh, so many castles uh, and um, it's just stunning. You can visit so many of them and kind of learn about uh, the whale's history and uh, and those lovely sheep. They are everywhere. We adore them. <laughs> they are cute, but not as cute as this couple who own the White Castle <laughs> Vineyard outside of Cardiff. I love them. We have the great opportunity, Lisa and I did, to meet them and taste some of their wines. They're holding their port, which is absolutely delicious. But what's great about Wales is that, like Lisa mentioned, the connection from London is two hours. It's so easy. This is a picture of Cardiff. In the background, you can see that beautiful Millennium Center, which is just uh, covered in bronze and slate, which is just gorgeous. I actually redecorated my house with that combination. <laughs> um, but in Wales, they do have a really interesting food culture there. They have a, some you know, very passionate locals that when you go on a walking tour in Cardiff with them through the arcades, they're stopping by all their friend shops that are there selling Welsh cakes or doing wine samples. It's really a fabulous town. Uh, Lisa and I went fishing there. We did our own catch and cook. We didn't catch that much, but we had a really fun time going out there learning about how the city is encouraging their young people to be part of the tourism industry and staying in Cardiff. Um, you can go to the White Castle Vineyard and meet the lovely couple. You can go to a smokery, so see how they smoke their salmon and their fish. You can go to Blanov and Cheese Company. This is a multi-generational family that is running this cheese shop. They're making everything on site, and they're selling it right out of their storefront. 
And then Pendaren Distillery, this is a Welsh whiskey. So it's winning tons of awards right now, and it's a great way to sample a different place of Ireland. So let's move on to your sales tools. Excellent. Uh, well, one of the uh, new things that has just happened this year is that you can now use the Oyster card on the Heathrow Express. So the Heathrow Express is definitely the fastest way to get uh, from Heathrow into the heart of London. Uh, it takes 15 minutes. Uh, you can go straight from the airport uh, and you used to have to buy a separate ticket. And now if you actually have your Oyster card already and you have uh, money on it, you can just tap in and uh, pay for your ticket that way. Um, so definitely check out the uh, Heathrow Express uh, website, which we will uh, share with you, but just quickly, it's heathrowexpress.com. Uh, and also for uh, tickets, we have our VB Shop, uh, which has all kinds of uh, attractions and also uh, transport cards like the Visitor Oyster Card, which you can buy for your clients before they depart. And uh, also, we're sharing all of these tools uh, on the uh, Travify Idea Board, uh, which you can access. Just trying to get that to appear. Here it comes. There we go. Uh, so on this Idea Board, uh, I don't know if uh, Stephanie with Travify wants to say anything about how how easy to access, but um, it will be available. That you can uh, access all of the information. Uh, Gina, did you want to say anything about the uh, information about Avanti on Travify? Yeah, so we are just, uh, hopefully you all saw the press release, Avanti is now integrated with Travify, so you can push all of your Avanti itineraries uh, right onto your Travify account, and to do so, we have a little step-by-step -step instruction on Travify. But Basically, you just go on to avantidestinations.com, pull up your booking, send out your day-by-day -day itinerary to your travel file account that is linked, and there's detailed instructions on where to put all that information. But Stephanie, I know, is going to send you some more information on the Travify idea board on the follow-up email. I know we're running short on time, so I just wanted to get these last points out that Lisa and I, we always have an abundance of information and we are uh, fast talkers. So don't worry, we have all of the information already put together, not only on the idea board on uh, Travelfy, but also on avantidestinations.com slash visit Britain. There you can find our B2B2C to C, um, E brochure, so that's something that you can actually share with your clients. All the CTAs say contact your travel professional. We also have a microsite. This is a great way to explore and get ideas for yourself. So we have all things on there like itineraries, images, videos, social links. Um, we even have some recipes on there to inspire your travelers. And then if you need, need more information about Avanti, please feel free to reach out to either myself or we have a wonderful uh, set of regional sales directors. We have eight different territories within the United States to help you and they're responsible uh, for you know making sales calls to your office but also meeting you at trade shows and providing you extra training as you need it. Lisa, do you want to talk about your Brit agent program? Sure. Uh, so one of the ways that uh, all of you can increase your destination knowledge about Great Britain is doing our Brit agent program. So it's online. You can go at your own pace. It's free. It's BritAgent.com. Uh, and when you complete it, you will get certification. Uh, this is a way just to show your clients that you have that extra uh, knowledge and expertise. Uh, we are also adding other uh, modules to it on a regular basis. So it's a place that you can go and uh, learn more and more about uh, Great Britain. And uh, you also will receive uh, discounts, some um, three to five percent on many things that are on our shop. Uh, and you'll get a, a discount code. And uh, so definitely go and log in and do that. Uh, also, on our trade website, trade.visitbritain.com, 
We've got all kinds of resources, um, maps and downloads and itinerary ideas and all kinds of general information. And one thing to let you know that's new is uh, in Britain, uh, when, when your clients arrive uh, through the airports, uh, they can now use the e-gate. And the e-gates, uh, as long as your client has uh, the, the newer passport that has a chip in it, uh, once they check in, the gate will automatically open for them and go through. And so they don't have to have an arrival card or anything like that. It's super simple. There's tons of signage. So they just, it's super easy. Uh, even the airlines will talk about it a little bit. Um, also, we have a new travel advisor guide. Uh, we will include a link to this in on the uh, idea board uh, so that you can access it digitally. It's got all the latest information uh, on Great Britain. And uh, yeah, so we've, we don't have enough time to go through everything in detail, but please definitely uh, use the idea board. Uh, feel free to uh, go on our websites, use the, uh, the sites that Gina was telling you about. Uh, that's where everything is all together in one place uh, for you. We created that specifically for you. And thank you, Stephanie. Do we have time for yeah. a few questions? Yeah, we do have a couple questions here. And thank you so much. I don't know, I bet everyone else just wants to hop on a plane now and go try out lots of those good <laughs> foods and drinks. <laughs> Looks amazing. Um, one thing I did want to mention about the idea board is, um, as Gina mentioned, you'll get an email after this. So it'll probably be in the next 30 to 45 minutes. And you will have the link to view that idea board. And then you will need to have a Travify account. So there's also steps on how to start your free trial so you can view that. Um, now, we only have time for a couple questions. Um, there, we had a, a good amount of questions regarding tour options. Um, and one, um, the first question that we had was from Mary, and she was asking, what's the max number that you can have of passengers on the borough tour? Um, I, I think she caps it at maybe like eight or 10. Cool, great. Um, another question to hear too, and I'm very interested in this one as well. Roberta asks, can't help but wonder if you have a Downton Abbey theme tour. Oh, that's a great question. Well, I know Lisa is um, pretty much the premier in the United States. She is telling everyone she's on her soapbox also, I'm very receptive to her messaging. But we do have, uh, for example, we don't have it specifically listed as Downton Abbey, but we have um, excursions out to Highclere Castle right now. So we're, yes. we, are, we are thinking of something that's more um, inclusive of more sites so that, you know, anyone that's inspired by the series and now the film can go follow in the footsteps. And also for uh, anyone that just wants to learn the different locations and where to experience it, you can just go on our website right now, um, especially on our consumer site, which is visitbritain.com. And just in the search engine, just write uh, Downton Abbey. Uh, there's a ton of content on there and links to all the different locations, uh, but we'll also include a link to it directly in the follow-up email to you. Perfect. Um, another question here uh, that Irma just asked is, do you offer join-in tours in other languages? So possibly Spanish, for example. We can do those on a, uh, like a special request basis. Perfect. Um, and then uh, Lindsay asked, what is the cost for the Brit agent certification? It's, it's free. It's just for you to learn. There's no cost. That is awesome. That's great. Yeah. And um, also in here too is, um, as I mentioned, after two, you'll get an email follow up with all this information. You'll be able to see this replay. Um, but if you have any follow up questions too, I know we won't be able to get through all of them. Definitely let, uh, you can reach out to academy at travify.com and I can help get you in contact with you know, the right person. Um, but otherwise, I just wanna say once again, thank you so much, Lisa and Gina, for spending time. Um, it was so interesting and really fun. And um, I just wanna give you the floor in case if there's any last words that you have to say. I just wanna say thank you. I think um, it's been a lot of fun to uh, work with Travify. Uh, Gina and I love talking about Great Britain and um, 
hope that we inspired everybody to, uh, you know, talk to their clients now. Uh, they will not be disappointed. It's a, it's a wonderful destination to go to uh, year round, uh, especially over the holidays. There's wonderful, um, you know, Christmas markets and festivals and different things going on. Uh, it's, it's a year round destination. And just to add to that, it is year round. We are promoting winter travel. So if you are booking Avanti for this winter, please feel free to look at our Go365 agent gift card offer. Um, I can send you more details if you like, but also it is the best time to book early for 2020. So through December 15th, it is the best pricing. We've contracted with our DMC service providers and hotels for the UK. So that is Wales, England, and Scotland. And that means hotels, some of the hotels have even come to the table with a uh, free night offer. So it may be like a third or a fourth night free. Uh, we have service providers doing you know, uh, percentages off, but in addition to that, Avanti is matching with a percentage off. So definitely want to look at that. Definitely want to reach out to your clients and get them um, excited for 2020 in Great Britain. And thank you all for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks again, everyone. And um, be you. on the lookout for that email. Yeah, thank you again. This was awesome. And um, everyone enjoy the rest of your Monday and maybe see you on some other webinars later this week.